you know, um, every now and then, doesn't happen a lot these days, um, but every now and then, a movie proves me wrong. And I was all set to kind of write this one off. Um, I've long held, and if you watch any of these reviews, and I've talked about it with my Alien uh, review, I talked about it with Pirates of the Caribbean, I talked about it a bit with Jurassic Park, um, but I tend to believe very strongly that there are some films that are just products of their time, and trying to catch that lightning in a bottle doesn't work. It's not as successful because the movie was made at the right time, with the right circumstances, the right combination of people, and, you know, trying to do sequels or prequels or continuations just doesn't fucking work anymore. And for a long time, I felt that about the Predator franchise. I love the first Predator, as most people do, because the first Predator is... Uh, you know, 80, the 80s in a in a two-hour stretch. You know, it, it, and like I say, it's one of those movies that it was made at that time. You know, this concept of the, the 80s manly man, you know, the manliest of men, muscle men, big, which were, you know, huge in the 80s, you know, coming up against something bigger and stronger and meaner than it. All right? So that's an interesting concept, and it worked well for that movie. They played it out, and it was awesome. Predator 2 is a glorious mess. I will not go so far as to say Predator 2 is a good movie, but Predator 2 is a fun movie where they play around with the formula a little bit. The Predator goes after a different type of badass as opposed to the, the muscle-bound soldier goes after the hard-nosed cop, which again was a big archetype in the, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, not as good as the first, but captured a lot of the same spirit, had a lot of the same fun, and, you know, again, not a classic by any stretch of the imagination. I, I can't even say it's a good movie by, you know, strictly objective terms, but one that I enjoy watching and have a lot of fun with. Predators um, tried to capture the magic of the first one, but couldn't do it. It's not to say that Predators is a bad movie, but it's, you know, it's forgettable. I, I actually, driving over to, to see this one, I had to kind of remind myself of some of the things and characters that happened in Predators. You know, aside from Adrian Brody and his horrible tough guy voice, which, you know what, everybody gives Christian Bale shit for his Batman voice. You know what? Go listen to Adrian Brody trying to do his badass voice in Predators. You know, and I'll take Christian Bale's Batman voice any day. Um, so now we come to The Predator. And before I go any further, I've got to say, um, th these movies have the most boring and generic titles of any franchise ever. And as opposed as I am to just assigning a sequel, some kind of random subtitle like the Resident Evil films or, uh, you know, the Mission Impossible movie so that it makes it impossible for you to tell, you know, which film came where in the series. I will take that over Predator, Predator 2, Predators, The Predator. It's like, come on, seriously? You got nothing else? At least stick a number on the end, you know? You know, give me something. Show me some form of originality. All right, anyway, so I, I had to get that out of the, out of the way because that has been fucking bugging me for years. And when I heard the title of this one, it really bugged me. Um, so this movie is an interesting amalgam of Predator 2 and Predators, wherein it's... Predators is the better made of the two Predator sequels, but Predator 2 is the more fun and the more feeling like it's a, it's a direct relation to the first one. And this one is a nice amalgam of both of those things. I took the best qualities from both films and managed to crush them together. Um, it's much better made than many of the other Predator sequels we've gotten. Um, 
but in spirit and in tone, it feels much more like the like Predator 2, a direct descendant of the original, something that carries on the continuity. I remember Predators, when it came out, uh, the director was like, oh, we're going to pretend like Predator 2 doesn't exist. I hate when films do that. Don't pretend a bad movie or don't pretend what you perceive as a bad movie didn't exist. Own it. Make it make it work for you. You know, um, I hate that they that they neither franchise acknowledges Predator versus Alien. I hate that. Even if you don't like the movies, you made them. Your characters were in them. You know, absorb it and learn from it, and you know, just acknowledge it. Okay. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I don't know if we really need to go into the plot for this because you know it's the plot of every Predator movie, but a little different. So. Predators land on Earth. One of them, supposedly, is kind of the old school predator who's come here to warn us and about things. And the other uber predator, kind of like the ones we saw in Predators, so again, keeping in continuity, um, is coming here to kill that one as a traitor and then kill us, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, stuck in the middle is a ragtag group of lovable misfit soldiers who are kind of just caught up in the adventure through circumstance. The main one being, uh, you know, your kind of generic white guy, pretty boy, Hollywood action movie lead and his, he kind of gets blackballed by the government, you know, and kind of shut him up about seeing an alien and throws him in with all of these, you know, the, the loony squad is what you know, they call them, the loonies. Um, so right here, let's talk, so right in that, let's just talk about that for a second, because that is one of the biggest strengths and one of the greatest weaknesses of the film. Uh, one of the best things about this movie is it, it gets what Predator got, what Aliens got, and what so many other of these movies tend to just forget, in that... What makes us love these movies are the characters, the fun characters that are in them. And when, you, you know, so many of these just kind of give you the generic, the body count is what I always call them. These are the characters you know are going to die. You know, so many of these modern day horror movies or any of these ones that are trying to do sequels of, you know, past, uh, you know, past films just miss that that what we the reason people love the marines from aliens the reason why people love not just schwarzenegger but love predator is because the main characters are surrounded by really colorful really enjoyable uh side characters that the audience can invest in yeah a lot of times they're 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 archetypes and stereotypes but they're stereotypes and archetypes that are fun for the audience, that we enjoy them when they're on screen, so that when they inevitably start getting killed off, which you know they're going to do, you actually feel it. And, it's, and that's something i got to give this film a lot of credit for, is that this is the first one of these in a long time that I've watched, and actually when the side characters start dying, you're actually like, oh man, oh, I liked him. You know, because a lot of them, again, for so long have just been, okay, here's the body count. We're not even going to bother giving them names or personalities or anything. They're just, you know, they're just kind of there and don't get attached kind of thing. Um, so right in there, the, the ragtag group of, you know, loony bin soldiers are a miraculous ensemble. A lot of fun, you know, varying personalities. And you tell the actors are all just digging it, you know, having a great time working off each other. And I guess that shouldn't come as, in a, as any kind of shock since Shane Black wrote and directed this. And he was one of the ragtag group of, you know, soldiers in the original. So he, he gets that dynamic. He understands, I think, that that is what, you know, kind of sells these movies. It's, you know, it's what holds the film together. You can't have boring leads you know, because we spend most of these films with the leads. The monsters only are there every so often, you know. So uh, those, those actors and those characters all did an amazing job and were a lot of fun, and you were like, yeah. Um, 
But one of the downsides, I think, is that the lead actor, whose name I don't know, I'm just going to call him by his character's name, McKenna. Um, McKenna is a surprisingly dull screen presence. Now, this is not to say that the actor is bad. He's not. He does the job very, very well. He's very serviceable in the role. It, it you know, he makes it work. But, you know, looking back, there's a formula for these things. You know, for instance, alien movies have a female protagonist. That is their thing. All right? Likewise, Predator movies, their leads always have to be kind of a, a specific type of charismatic actor. I mean, you start off the franchise with Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger. You know, one of the most charismatic state uh, screen presidents of all time. You follow that up with Danny Glover, who, again, a different type of tough guy, but had that charisma and had that power to kind of pull through. Um, as much as I didn't like him in the movie, Adrian Brody in Predators, you know, he had, he was a different kind of army tough guy, svelte, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit more wormy, and he, even though I didn't like him and I didn't like the voice, he was the presence that kind of carried that film. Um, this guy, and again, he's not a bad actor. It's not a bad performance by any stretch of the imagination. But this guy is just your average, you know, late 20, 20 teens, uh, you know, generic white action hero. There is nothing unique or different or charismatic about him that stands out. And maybe it's better to put it this way. Go watch the original Predator. Go watch... Predator 2, and there's nobody other than Schwarzenegger or Danny Glover you can see playing that role. Alright, they make it theirs. It's theirs. This guy, he could have been played by any white actor in Hollywood. You know, now, you get you get a Michael B. Jordan, you get a, uh, I'll even say Jennifer Garner after, uh, after Peppermint, and I know people disagree with me on that. Um, you get a Gal Gadot, all right? People love her in Wonder Woman. She's got a badass presence, you know? You get someone like that, someone different, someone unique, someone with a really, really uh, specific screen presence as your lead. Now I'm invested. And as it is, this guy was just kind of a very boring character, um, surrounded by much more charismatic and entertaining um, uh, entertaining actors. Uh, this is, as I find it funny, this is the second movie I've seen in the last month with Thomas Jane in it. Haven't seen him in anything for fucking years. And now it's like, oh, there's two with Thomas Jane. You know? Um, so, yeah. Um, action scenes are pretty good. I mean, that's what you go to these things for. I like that they tweak the formula enough so it's telling a little bit of a different story. Um, but still keeping it in tune. you got to be careful with Predator movies. Predator and Alien movies. Um, because it seems like the more people have tried to explain the aliens and more they've tried to explain the Predators, um, the worse the movies have gotten. Because, you know, we don't... I don't want to know about the Predator society. I don't want to know about, you know, how their culture works. They're sport hunters who come here to hunt us for sport. That's all I fucking need to know. Now they're more like a force of nature... And then, you know, something is scarier when you don't know what it is. Um, so you've got to be real careful when you do a storyline that goes away from that premise. Because one, on the one hand, you have to do that, because otherwise the movies are just very samey, and why bother? And on the other hand, um, if you stray too far, the film, you know, gets bogged down in its, in its own mythology. It's the problem uh, Independence Day Resurrection, or not Resurrection, Resurgence had. Um... But the story works. It's it's just strong enough to get us from point to point to point to point. Um, and again, I, I cannot say I was not entertained watching this. I was very entertained, and it is one, again, one of those scales I put for is this a good movie? Is would I would I buy this? Would I when it comes out on Blu-ray, would I, you know, you know, would I buy it and watch it again? Yeah. Yeah, I will. I definitely will. I, I enjoy this one. However, I gotta talk. There's a couple things I gotta talk about. Um, just minor annoyances. So first off, so the whole deal with this movie 
is that the alien you know point you know version one is bringing us something to help us survive for reasons which I won't get into that's the whole plot of this movie the whole thing of it um, and in the very very end when we finally see what he brought us it is the stupidest fucking thing ever it is a thing that I'm looking at and going how could they have just blown all the goodwill that they just racked up with everything else in this movie and you know fuck it over that badly this this thing that he brings us is so fucking stupid okay i am not going to tell you what it is you got to go see it for yourself but it is it is awful um so there's that um another thing that i, I wasn't a big fan of with this film is I, I am not a fan of the cgi predator and I had some of them a little bit in Predators and all that. One thing I liked about the early 80s and 70s films like this one and the original Alien and Aliens is that the creatures were practical. They were there. They were physical. They existed within the world of physics. And that made them scarier because even though you knew they weren't real, you knew it was some guy lumbering around in a huge suit, it, it still you know, felt like something that existed in the world. And I think when you go to the CGI, and especially, I'm sorry, this is not great CGI on this monster. It's just not. It's very, very generic and cheap looking. So the CGI Predator didn't work. Um, it sounds like I'm ragging on this film a lot, and I don't mean to. It's, you know, because again, it is far better than anything I expected. You know, it's far better than any of these Predator movies have been in a long time. Um, and far better than these types of movies have been in a long time. So, I, I don't mean to just sound like I'm just ripping it apart, but I mean, there are things that just stick out. Um, there's an interesting cameo in this movie if you're a fan of the Predator films and you kind of, again, know the continuity. There's a fun little cameo in this uh, that I'm not going to ruin um, but that just kind of leads to not, not a bad point in the film just something I'm kind of that, that I've always been interested in um, Arnold Schwarzenegger will whore himself out for any piece of shit Terminator sequel that they do but he has never once done a cameo in a Predator movie and I find that really weird I can understand it when they did Predator 2 because you know, he was still like one of the biggest stars ever, and you know he didn't want to do uh, a sequel. And I can understand, you know, oh, Mr. Trippy keeps falling over. You know, I can understand. You know, the, 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 again, the movie was kind of delightfully awful, so I can understand why he he turned it down. But it's like really, he, he wouldn't do a cameo for this one. Uh, and again, it's not that I wanted him there. It's not like, um, it's not like the film needed it. But it's this thing of like. You whore yourself out for every piece of shit Terminator movie, but you won't do a Predator cameo. Just, just an interesting, uh, interesting priorities there by Arnie. Um, I can't really think of much more to say on this one. The film is good, fun, old school popcorn action monster movie. Is it as good as the first? No, but nothing's as good as the first. You know, that's just the way it is. Um, but I think it's a worthy successor. I think it carries on the story. I, I'm a little concerned with the, how bad the ending is with what they're going to do with it next because you know they're going to do another one of these fucking things at some point. Um, but the thing that really puts it over the top is the really great ensemble cast that make up the core group. They are awesome. They're fun to watch. They're really having a good time, and it's something that makes me want to watch the movie again. So, final grade on this one. I uh, don't have the same problem I had with uh, A Simple Favor. I, I, this one is a B plus. Good, good, solid adventure, and, you know, rewatchable, 
but not not groundbreaking or interesting or really going to redefine the genre in any way. But not everything has to. Sometimes you just want to watch a, uh, a monster and some soldiers go at it. So there you are. Um, so another, another weekend with a lot of movies and a lot of things under my belt. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't want to say it and then not do it. Um, but this week... I'm looking to do a retro review because I'm, I'm planning on going and seeing something that's being re-released for a few days, and I'm really excited. So uh, until next time, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.